Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for red and blue teams on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we will continue where we left off and look at a couple of common ways in which I have personally seen uh, programmers make mistake when using token privileges. So in the last couple of videos, we used WTS enumerate processes EX to go ahead and get a process listing. Then what we figured out is if we have elevated privileges, then we can find a lot more interesting information about the process. So what did we really do? Now we called up lookup privilege value and then we figured out you know the privilege we need which in the previous case was the SE debug privilege and then we opened up the processes token and then we adjusted the privileges. Now, of course the assumption is that the privilege exists right. Now if we go back and have a look at our code we had a very simple function called enable debug ability right and where we called lookup privilege value open process token and adjust token privileges now of course we've done a lot of error checking everywhere just to make sure that if something doesn't work then we get to know about it right so let me run this program I'm going to close my previous runs and let's go into this directory. So if you recall, we check for privileges right in the top and if I go over here, I've just added a little bit of error checking. And rather than just call enable debug ability, what I also do is check if debugging was uh, the SE debug priv was actually enabled. Now, if it couldn't be enabled, then I just say could not get debugging privilege and I exit. And if we manage to enable it, then we basically say adding debug privilege, Yahoo, and then wait for a key press to continue with the program. Now, let's see what happens if we run this program. So here it is. And if you notice, it says added debugging privilege. Fantastic. Let me go ahead and run it. Now, if you already noticed something is amiss, right? I am not running this from a privileged, uh, you know, prompt. And we, we get some dump here. But as you can clearly see, all of this part is vacant, right? Now, what happens if I run this from a privileged prompt? Okay, once again, I get the same message. But of course, this time around, I get a lot more information. So what is really happening here? I mean, why is this uh, function returning adding debug privileges when it basically did not enable it? Very unusual. Now, this is the source for a lot of bugs. Why? If you look at the documentation of adjust token privileges in the note, there is something really very important. And that actually says that the new state, which is what we are trying to assign, can specify privileges that the token does not have without causing the function to fail. Now, this is unusual. What this means is we could try and enable privileges our token doesn't even have. And all that happens is the call still succeeds and those tokens are basically uh, those privileges are just ignored so in this case the function adjusts the privilege that the token does have and ignores the other privileges so that the function succeeds so the key issue here is that if we do not verify that the privilege we require is available in the token 
at just token privileges might still just succeed without going ahead and throwing an error right and this can be a huge source of bugs so what do we do now what is within a token so this is something we've looked at before as well let's look at it in more detail right so the information available within the token is actually part of the token information class enum right and what this enum allows us to do is look at all the different details which are part of the token and then all we have to do is use get token information to get each of these data about the token out so for example we can call get token information along with token privileges uh, mentioned as input to get all the available privileges in the token similarly if we wanted more information about the token user groups uh, source again token elevation type token elevation all of this important to us uh, we could just go ahead and use get token information with the appropriate input from here and get that data out fantastic so what are we going to do right now right so what we are going to do is we are going to call get token information and get the list of privileges available in the token and then we need to check if the SE debug privilege in our case if it is available or not if it isn't then we exit if it is then of course we can try and go ahead and escalate privilege right fantastic now one other essential thing we had used open process token previously right so if we go back here So in open process token, we had used token adjust privileges, right? So that we could call adjust token privileges. Now, the thing you need to remember is when we actually use get token information, we need to go ahead and add other access right requests as well. The one in particular, which is of importance right now is token underscore query, right? This is required to query an access token. Now, without going ahead and adding this to the mix, it will not be possible to run get token information, right? There are other combinations one could use as well, but this is the bare minimum we could go ahead with. So what I've done is I have rewritten enable debug ability with something which now calls itself enable debug ability with checks right so at the very top here i do the same thing i go ahead and look up privilege okay i create the token privileges structure just like before uh, i go ahead and get a <clears throat> excuse me handle to the open uh, to the token and this is done using open process token. The key thing if you see right now, we have gone ahead and added both the access rights, right? Which is the adjust privileges and token query, both of them, right? And after that, we do something interesting. Now get token information uh, is actually an interesting function. Let me go back over here. And this is something which is true for a lot of Windows APIs, as we shall see when we do more and more examples. So the problem really is that we pass the token handle, we pass the token information class. In, in our case, what we are interested in is basically token privileges, right? That's all we need. And after that, we also have to mention some space where all of that output is going to shift back to us, right? And of course, we also have to mention the length of the space which we are providing. Now, here is the problem. How do we know a priori uh, 
what is the size of that information? You know, are there 20, 30, 40, 50, 1,000 different privileges? Of course, there aren't that many, but assuming that, you know, we are future-proofing this. So this is really where what we could do is we can go ahead and blank out token information and token information length and instead first call get token information just by providing return length. What get token information does is it tells us how much of uh, space we need to allocate in order to get all of that information for this specific token. So this is our very first call over here. If you notice, we aren't really reading back anything, but rather all we care about is the size of the data we are expecting to read back. Now, once we get this back, all we are going to do is allocate that much of data using malloc or, I mean, you can use heap alloc, whatever you need, and then call get token information once again. Right, this time around, we've provided the space the function requires so that it can populate all of those privileged structures in there. Now, once we get this back, let's actually go back here. The, the data structure we get back, right, totally depends on what we requested for. So in this case, we have requested for token privileges. So to find what kind of data structure we will deal with, we can go down. And if you notice for token privileges, the buffer receives a token privileges structure. Let's click on that. Fantastic. So what does this data structure contain? First is privilege count, of course. So this is the number of privileges available in our token. So which means we are going to iterate through all of these privileges, right, up to privilege count, right, that is the number of iterations. And then after that, we have a very simple LUID and attributes structure, right, which actually contains all those privileges. So if I click on how that structure looks like, uh, seems to have two members, one is LUID, and the other is just a D word, which is attributes. Okay, fantastic. Now, if you were to look at what LUID itself is, then basically it is just a 64-bit value guaranteed to be unique only on the system on which it is generated. Okay, fantastic. And it has a low part and a high part. The low part is a D word, the high part is a long. Just keep this in your mind for now. Right, so now let's go back to our code. Now we have already found the LUID value for SE debug privilege by calling lookup privilege value, right? So this privilege LUID after this call goes through successfully contains the LUID value for SE debug privilege, right? Keep that in mind for now. So when we go ahead and call get token information for the token privileges, then as we saw, we get back these bunch of entries containing the different privileges. So here, what I do very, very simply is just go through in a loop, right? Pick up each privilege and I check if that privilege is actually the SE debug privilege or not, right? Now, how do I do that check? Well, very simply, I compare the low part with the low part of privilege LUID, which is really the value for SE debug priv, and I then check the high part with the high part, right? Really quick comparison, and of course, we would have to and them both. Uh, the other option, if I remember, is a function called RTL equal LUID. I think it's more of a macro, which is used in device driver programming. Uh, but the comparison itself is so simple that I thought it would be interesting to do it with the first principles. Okay. So what we do here is we check. Now, if SE debug privilege isn't there in the token, then of course we print that 
that unfortunately that isn't there in the token and we need to rerun the program with privileges, right, and return a false. And if we find a C debug privilege, then of course this part isn't executed. We come right over here, which ends up adjusting the token privileges, right? Fantastic. So let me go ahead and now change the function call from our old function, which was enable debug ability to enable debug ability with checks. So let's go in here and let's add this. There we go. Let's rebuild the program. So what we're trying to do is build a smart program which can automatically understand what is available to it, right? Extremely important uh, in the field. So for the first demo, I'm just going to use a regular prompt, right? This isn't having any escalated privileges or elevated privileges. Uh, let's actually go back in here to this directory. And let's run the program now. There you go. Beautifully, the program prints SE debug privileges unavailable in the token. Please run with privileges. Fantastic. Now let's actually open up an admin prompt and see what happens. Fantastic, we have the privileges. There is a get car. Let me go ahead and hit an enter again. And there you go. The program runs beautifully, right? Fantastic. So as you can clearly see, we've ended up making our program extremely intelligent, right? And this is important. Keep in mind that, especially when you're going to be writing your own tools for red teaming and all of that, there have to be sufficient number of checks, especially when dealing with things like privilege, right? Uh, these are extremely common mistakes I've found in a lot of tools I've looked at, used, or code I've written in the early days. Uh, very common mistakes, right? And this is really what I wanted to address in this video. Now, here is what you're asking. Of course, we found out that we don't have uh, enough privileges, let's say. What do we do next, right? Why can't we just restart our program automatically and have it run with maximum privileges if, if the user allows or with elevated privileges, right? So this is what is going to be the subject for the next video where we will look at how to go ahead and force a restart of the program automatically, right? Uh, so that should be fun. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you're having fun at Pentester Academy, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.